has reviewed the governor's budget for the agencies in health and human resources. The governor's proposed investments in behavioral health, developmental disability services, and child welfare. The subcommittee adopts much of that funding, but builds on those resources to continue making significant investments in community behavioral health services, ensuring individuals with developmental disabilities are served in the most integrated settings, and further enhancing our Medicaid program to better serve those enrolled, including the expanded population, which is close to covering nearly 400,000 additional Virginians. With regards to serving individuals with the developmental disabilities, I will note that the Commonwealth is coming up on the end of its 10-year settlement agreement with the U.S. <coughs> Department of Justice. It is a remarkable achievement that the Commonwealth has invested so much in improving our community-based services, and in June of this year, we will close the fourth and last training center scheduled to be closed that was part of the original plan. There is still work to be done in enhancing services to provide greater opportunities for individuals to live in the most integrated settings. As such, the recommendations before you are part of a total package of $93 million in this budget to provide a much needed increase in provider rates and additional 500 waiver slots in the second year. I'm also pleased to report the amendments before you result in $138 million of total funding in the budget for community-based behavioral health services. These amendments will result in the Commonwealth doubling its funding for permanent supportive housing. By the end of the biennium, over 2,000 Virginians with serious mental illnesses will have access to stable housing. In addition, $10 million is provided for two-year pilot projects with health systems to explore alternative strategies to divert temporary detention order, TDO admissions, from state psychiatric hospitals. The subcommittee considered the proposal to use supplemental Medicaid payments to divert TDOs. However, its impact was too uncertain, and the urgency of the situation requires pursuing immediate projects that will likely reduce the census pressure on our state psychiatric hospitals. The subcommittee recommendations include additional investments to raise Medicaid, reimbursement for personal care, adult day health care, residential psychiatric facilities, and nursing homes. In addition, the subcommittee recommends adding an adult dental benefit to Medicaid to better promote the overall health of low-income Virginians. Lastly, I will note that the subcommittee considered the proposal to establish a reinsurance program in the individual insurance market. While this strategy can assist in reducing insurance premiums, other critical priorities across the budget require the use of those resources. The subcommittee will continue to evaluate such a program going forward. As I conclude, let me thank the members of the subcommittee for their hard work and the time they invested to put this report together, which was a lot of time. I sincerely appreciate the contributions and efforts of each member of the subcommittee to create this report. And that, of course, includes Senator Howe, uh, who is the co-chair of this particular subcommittee, Senator Barker, Deeds, Vogel, Eben, and McClellan, uh, who put in a lot of time. And, of course, um, Mike Tweedy, our staff person who uh, spends a lot of hours and has uh, a capacity to address a lot of our uh, desires and suggestions. Um, in fact, he always tells us we can do that. But it, you can tell by the inflection of the vo in his voice whether or not we really should do that. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Madam Chair, uh, I conclude my report of Health and Human Resources, and I hope it will be the pleasure of the committee to adopt.